Hey, thanks for watching this pre-recorded webinar. My name is Lou Ginfinger and I'm here with Chuck Maselli, the SPIB eLearning Consultant. Today he will be walking you through the SPIB eLearning West Coast course. Chuck, go ahead. Okay, this course uh, is the West Coast version of the e-learning course. Um, that we made a few changes to the Southern Pine version to make it more applicable to the West Coast student. Um, the way the course is organized is there is a series of lessons here, introduction lessons to get the student started, and then we get into the American Softwood Lumber Standard where we explain all the defects and characteristics they'll encounter, and then we describe all of the grades in the West Coast version, we include the grades construction standard and utility, the light framing grades. Uh, these grades are typically graded in some combination on the West Coast, so we added those. And then um, to the basic course, we can also add select structural and stud grade. Once we describe the defects in the grades, we get into the tools of the lumber grading art, which is basic. Uh, fractions for lumber graders, understanding proportion, and uh, of course reading the tape measure. Then we get into the heart of the program, which is sizing up knots and two-inch dimension lumber. Um, this this whole section here is broke down similarly, and we build a, a base describing knot quality, shape, and location, and then we get into how to measure those knots, and then we discuss a technique for lumber graders to be able to look at the knots without having to measure anything and be able to grade them by comparing what they would measure to the width of the peaks. This is known as the total measurement technique. And we actually have practice in the course, in the lessons for practicing that total measurement technique. Then we get down to, uh, up until this point of the course, we don't ask the student to actually memorize anything. When we get to the final section, learning to grade two-inch dimension lumber, we start to cover each of the grading rules in detail, and then uh, we get into construction standard and utility grade, and then if the extra lessons for select structure or studs are added, we describe those in detail. The final part, or the next part of the program is the not test section, and here we have actual video clips that the graders can practice on grading knots. This saves a tremendous amount of time. Rather than going through packs and packs of lumber, the graders can actually practice grading knots and get immediate feedback on whether they're right or wrong. The third section of the program is called the Rules Memorization Review Drill. One of the challenges for new graders is being able to memorize the rules. So we built a section here that is repetitive uh, review drill. It's not really a test. This is to help them memorize the rules. We suggest they complete this test where they get 95% or better on the drill two consecutive times in a row to memorize all of the, uh, the, the grading rules for the grades that they're going to be grading at the mill. Um, the last section is a not review section. I'll show you how this can be used primarily for new students. He can review knots by grade, and we usually suggest that they go through the number one knots first and then look at the number three knots, and you can see such a big difference between the size of those knots, and then review some number two. And a grader can actually have a feel for which knots go in which grade before he even knows how to measure them. Now, the, the course is designed to be used by new graders and, and experienced graders. What we recommend is for new graders to uh, at least go through these first uh, introductory lessons and, uh, and complete the math and measurement section. Uh, before they have any interaction with the lumber inspector now or the trainer, the trainer at the mill, sometimes it's an inspector, sometimes it's a quality supervisor at the plant. But we recommend that there is some interaction between the uh,
student and the trainer while he's going through the course. So let me show you real quick how the lesson interface looks and how the course can be used by the student. One thing I want to mention, most e-learning is uh, rather stressful to use and we designed the course, I'll show you some of the features here that uh, relieve some of that stress. We, we allow the grader to retake the quizzes as often as they want. They have to pass the quiz to open up the next lesson, so it forces them through the course in order, but they can go back and retake quizzes if they're not personally satisfied with the scores. So let me give you a quick look at a few lessons so you can see how the interfaces look. It's real easy to navigate. And on the left side of the screen is the content we want the grader to focus on. We use pictures on the right side to help illustrate the point. This is a quick introductory lesson, and uh, we put this in here to get the student comfortable with the navigation and uh, familiarized with the course. Anytime you see a uh, green highlighted word here, this is connected to a glossary. And uh, we don't test the student anything in the glossary. This is to encourage them to learn at their own pace material that they are more interested in. And uh, we explain what the lesson content will contain further on in the course. For example, uh, working with the tape measure. Then we talk about lessons on knots and how we're going to learn this total measurement technique to evaluate the knot by comparing to the width of the piece. We talk about why lumber grading rules are important, why the lumber grader is important, and how the decisions affect the mill's grade yield. And uh, then we get into uh, explanation of uh, what we're going to study on the total measurement technique, which is the technique that's unique to this course. It's the first time this technique has been uh, put in a systematic manner to uh, teach the grader this technique. Okay, so there's a short quiz at the end of the first lesson here, and um, the student can select the correct answer. He immediately goes to the next one. Um, if he gets the answer incorrect, for example, why, well, let's, let's uh, Go to the next question. Oops, I missed it. Okay, we'll go back. We're calculating the results here. When when the quiz is finished, the student will be able to decide on his own whether or not he wants to submit the score. We seem to have a slow internet connection here this morning. Here we are. So he, he passed the quiz. There was four questions. He got four correct. He's got 100%. We tell him it's well done. Now he can save the score here, or if he didn't pass, he could uh, um, hit the next button and continue. We're going to save the score. He can take the lesson over as often as he wants now once he completed it. Okay. The second lesson is talking about the National Grading Rules System, and um, we, took, we show the grade marks from some of the West Coast lumber inspection agencies. We have a list here of all the different agencies that are qualified rules writing agencies. And we talk about the quality supervisor's role, how the National Grading Rules organize, and then there's a short quiz. And again, I wanted to show you if they if they do get the wrong answer here, he has the option to review the lesson and try again. He clicks that, it takes him right back to the page where the answer is, and then he can return to the quiz and put the correct answer in. And uh, when he passes the quiz, um, it will open the next lesson. And you see I got, I got a few wrong. So now he's failed the quiz. So he can elect not to save his score. Just click the, the next button and he can 
restart that lesson over, okay? So all the lessons in here are organized in that manner. The second group is uh, talking about the um, all the defects and characteristics that they'll encounter. This is, again, foundational material. Um, lots of photos here. Saves lots of time. The uh, not necessary to go through packs and packs of lumber to find examples of slope of grain, compression wood, various types of decay. And we define all of the defects that are defined in the NGR. That first lesson was on the natural defects and characteristics. The next lesson is on the manufacturing defects, and we cover drying defects, and we specifically talk about knots. And again, this is just defining those defects. We talk about the difference between sound knots and unsound knots. This has nothing to do with knot measurement. This is just all foundational material definitions. And again, all the different types of knots they might encounter. Um, it saves a lot of time. You don't have to go through packs and packs of lumber to find all these different defects and characteristics. Now, again, I want to emphasize the first part of the course is foundational material, and there's a lot of things that we neglect to go over when we're teaching in the shed, um, and we do it in a rather haphazard manner where the course is organized step by step. We talk about how a pine tree grows, we talk about branches and how they produce knots in the board. We talk about how sawing lumber creates defects. We show how the branches would go through the piece and, and create those knots. We talk about how drying affects the defects they'll encounter and then how planing. We talk about the difference between the nominal and dress sizes the uh, difference between narrows and wides, and all, again, basic terminology, thickness, width, end, edge, white face, length, spring wood, summer wood. These are all things a lot of times we take for granted the student knows and causes a lot of confusion. They don't understand. We're talking about the uh, thickness of the edge versus the uh, width of the white face. We talk about what dimension lumber is used for, and uh, there's a short quiz at the end of this lesson. Okay, so covers all the foundational material, describe the grades, how they fit in relation to each other. Um, again, we're not asking them to memorize any grade rules yet at this point. Then we get into uh, basic fractions, the math for lumber graders. And here we tried to keep it real simple. The only fractions they really need to deal with to learn the grading rules are quarters, thirds, halves, two thirds, and three fourths. And we attempt to show how those apply to the wide face and to the edge of the piece of lumber. We talk about what a basic fraction is. You cut something in half, you get two equal pieces. Each is called a half. We show how that applies to the board face. And then we talk about thirds and how that applies to the board face. And then we talk about quarters, cut a half and half, create four pieces, show how that applies to the white face, and then two thirds. Two thirds is often a concept that they have trouble dealing with. Okay, two thirds versus one third to face. And the last fraction they have to know is three-fourths, okay? Now, we talk about those fractions as they're related to the white face. We also talk about how that relates to the edge, evaluating knots and weighing. That's important to understand. And a lot of times when they have trouble with math, they're afraid to admit it, and they feel under pressure when their peers are around where they can work with these fractions in the course without being tested. This is interactive training here. If he does it, he's not sure what three-fourths the edge looks like. If he clicks the wrong one, it tells him he's incorrect. If he clicks, clicks the correct one, it'll tell him he's correct. 
again, no, not testing here. This is just interaction. And again, how this works with face. This all helps the student learn at his own pace without a lot of pressure from his peers or the trainer. Um, we talk about proportion and then we get into reading the tape measure. This is a critical skill. A lot of people don't want to admit they don't know how to read the tape measure. So we take them step by step down to how we're going to read a tape to a sixteenth of an inch. We talk about the half inch is about the size of your little finger. The inch is about the size of the thumb. We look at the tape measure, see how it's broken into sixteenths. We tell them the half inch mark is the tallest mark because that's the largest fraction of the inch. They can click on the tape and see the half inch mark. We repeat that whole process going through halves and then quarters. And then if we have four equal pieces, we cut those all in half. We create eight pieces. Each one's called an eighth. And then the sixteenth. Then after they understand the concept of how the tape is divided, we provide some interactivity here where they can actually slide the pointer and look at the marks. Again, courage is learning at their own speed. Here we have, let's practice adding fractions. We can select a uh, equation here. And he says a quarter plus a quarter. Let's think he, let's see, he thinks that's right here. It'll say no, try again. He can click on the fraction. He can actually see what a quarter is and see them add up on the tape and get the correct answer. Okay. So after uh, we cover the basic skills of math, then we get into the heart. Sizing up knots for two-inch dimension lumber. As I said, grading knots is the most time-consuming part to learn. So we broke this the same way. We start with the basic terminology. Make sure everyone's on the same page. We go into knot quality, shape, and location. Um, we show that knot quality is only an issue in number one, number two, and number three lumber allows knots of any quality. And then we talk about the different knot shapes. We start with simple knots and describe what those are. We show them how they look inside the piece of lumber. And we talk about spike knots. What is a spike knot? Uh, and again, we're just not how to measure, just what they are. Defining all the shapes, we define a three-face knot. And we added this one, we call it a white face spike knot, where the knot shows on the white face the edge and then goes inside the piece to the pit. Then we talk about knot location, center line knot, combination knot, edge knots, and displaceable knots. We define each one of those. Then we talk about combination knots, what creates a combination knot when we consider both knots are in the same cross section. And then we have a quiz on that. So again, just basic terminology on knots, and then we get into how these different shapes are measured. And what we teach here is not so much making the calculations of the knot size. What we want them to focus on is this bright green line. What, it is, what part of the knot would have to be measured in order to determine how big it is? So we show the knots are measured at a right angle across the width that uh, attempt to get the cross section. This concept's a little hard to get across in the shed. We tried to show what we mean by a cross section here of the knot. And then we talk about how we're going to measure all these different shapes. For simple knots, we measure one side, the other side, add together, divide by two. And then uh, we give some examples here of how that's going to take place. And then we let them actually practice. Again, in the lesson, they can actually practice measuring the knot and decide what size it is without being tested. Okay, then we talk about simple knots that don't go all the way through the piece, how those would be measured. Then we give them the opportunity to show that they understand that concept. And then we talk about the measurement of spike knots. Okay, and again, same, same procedure. He actually gets to measure these, 
and decide if he's got the correct uh, technique down for measuring these knots. We talk about spike knots that don't take the full edge and how to handle those. And again, practice without testing. And then the three-face knot. This is one of the more difficult ones to learn. We defined the area between the edge of the knot and the edge of the piece as the gap and how they can use the proportion on the edge to evaluate how much of the gap they need to add to the knot size. And then practice there to see that they've got that concept. Then the last one is the wide face spike knot. And we show how that's a combination of two knots they've already learned, a simple knot and a spike knot. And then we have practice there for that also. Now, on the West Coast and Canadian species, we get uh, a lot of knots that don't occur in southern pine. We call these edge to edge, edge to wide face, edge to edge, and wide face to wide face knots. And we show how these are combinations of shapes that they've already learned how to measure. We give them tests again without scoring so they can practice at their own. And then we talk about measuring unsound knots and holes and have a summary there. And there's quite a long quiz there to actually test to see at the end if they they've got it all. This this training here on, on the knots really takes a long time out the shed. And by putting this all in a structured order, we can get the student up to speed on how to evaluate the knots pretty quickly. The last section in here now allows them to practice what they've learned and includes a lot of video clips. Okay, They can play the clip, the board actually rotates, they can select the grade, they can click on a rules button. This again, we're emphasizing this total measurement technique. And in the lesson, we have all the grading rules for the total measurement technique. And they also get a card that shows how to apply this technique to each width and each grade. Okay, there's plenty of video examples in here. And they can actually click the Show Me button and it shows them what parts of the knot need to be measured and why. And then compares that to the width of the piece. And then um, they can refer to the rules to see which grade that would be. Now, after the students finish this uh, total measurement technique, we're going to ask them to go to the knot section and actually start to take tests on the knots. Um, this lesson explains what that total measurement technique is and gives them all the shorthand rules. These are also downloadable from the website. and We recommend that they download the total measurement rules and the shorthand grading rules prior to taking the course so they can have these on hand. Again, this technique focuses on knowing immediately what you need to measure and then being able to compare that to the width of the piece. Okay, We show them how that applies, number one, number two, and number three. Number one knots, the total measurements equal about one half the width, which is 25% of the cross section. Number two, two thirds the width. And number three, the full width. Then we show how this is going to apply for the combination knot. We talk about wood left and total measurement over. This is the shorthand rules. The grader can actually, if they, they understand these shorthand rules, they really don't even need to know the knot sizes because they're just comparing what they see to the lumber. The, the width of the lumber is actually measuring the knots for them. It's really the most accurate way to grade the knots on the chain. We explain why this is easy to use on the chain because you're estimating how much wood you have to have left rather than the holes 
size of the knots averaged out. And uh, again, after they learned how to measure them, they can uh, practice here to see if they know which bright green line represents the total measurement for a particular shape of knot. Okay. And then there's lots and lots of examples in here, and again, testing without scoring. And then there's a summary at the end, and there's quite a good quiz here. Um, we built this section to save a lot of uh, training time for the lumber inspector or the quality supervisor. Okay, so after they've had an opportunity to learn this total measurement technique, we have a knot test section here where they can select the knots that they grade at their mill. Some mills only grade two by fours, some only grade fours and sixes, and some grade some other combination. So the grader can actually take tests on the knots that they grade at their plant and earn a certificate at the end. There are 20 question tests, and the way they're designed is a board comes up, it turns, the grader has to select what grade he thinks it is. If he gets it correct, it tells him he can go to the next piece. Board turns, select the grade. Now, if he gets it wrong, it gives him immediate feedback. It tells him this is incorrect. This grade is actually number four piece. He can check anytime he wants the grading rules. He can see we're doing combination knots on two by fours, and he can see that a uh, number three takes a uh, total measurement of the full face plus an inch and a half over on the other side. This not exceeded that. He can close this. He can go back here and he can pause this video. And then he can look at this from any angle. He can see he has to measure this part of that, this part of the knot, turn it over and see what he needs to measure on the other side of the knot. And you can see that exceeds the number four. Okay, so he has to go through this um, several times until he can uh, successfully get 20 right in a row. And he can bail out of this test at any time that he wants and start the test over. So this would encourage him to do this very repetitively. And there's just no other way a student could grade this many knots in such a short period of time and get immediate feedback on all his grade decisions. And we suggest that the instructor observe some of the testing here in the beginning to see where the student's at and help them in their decisions. The more interaction you have between the trainer and the trainee while they're using this section, the better. And then once they've completed a few tests, they can use that as a review. So that gives you a basic overview of what the course is. Um, the one thing we've added to the rules lesson is this rules review drill. This section was designed for the student to memorize the rules. And what we've done is we've incorporated this section right into the rules lesson. So when he's proceeding through the course and he gets to the grading rules section, he'll have an opportunity to take the rules review right after he learns a particular rule. So we made a shorthand rules card. This will be the reverse side of the shorthand rules for the total measurement technique. And as you can see here, each rule is simplified to the maximum that it could be um, for a particular grade. So we look here, observing and evaluating number one weighing. We talk about the maximum allowable weighing is half the edge and a third to face. That's the part that's highlighted. That's the part that's highlighted in the rule, the shorthand rule, half the edge and a third to face. That's the part we wanted to memorize. Okay? And then on the edge, the weight.
length can be half the edge, that's a three quarter inch nail and edge. A penny is about three quarters of an inch. That's the tip that comes from the trainer that's not included in a book anywhere. Then he has access to the actual rule from the NGR. And then there's also photos to help illustrate the point. So he has every resource at his fingertips here to learn this rule. Same uh, for number two, Wayne, and then we get into number three, Wayne. Now, once he understands those three rules and has an opportunity to understand what parts we want him to memorize, he can actually go to the review drill now. This is the separate section I showed you earlier, and take the rules review drill. Okay. Now, we're going to do Wayne. There's 18 questions. The way this is set up is one time we show him the shorthand rule we're asking him to memorize, half the edge, half inch nail and edge, and half the face. That's number two. If he's correct, he goes to the next question. Then a, one time we show him a picture and ask him to pick the correct grade. And again, we have the shorthand rule. Again, the shorthand rule. These are coming up at random. And then picture. I'm hoping to come where we have the three rules together. Every time, sometimes we show them the grade name and then ask them to pick the rule. This one's important because it shows the rules in order. This is also to help them memorize the rule. Okay. And then once he's got uh, two successful 100% scores on the rules, we say he's completed that section. Then we go into evaluate and skip, and we go through every every rule, again, with tips that come from the lumber inspector, such as uh, when you see a sharp edge, you know you're approaching an eighth of an inch deep because the edge is gone, and then the rules review. And this is for every defect. So as a student goes through this section, he can uh, demonstrate his proficiency on the rules by passing all of those rules tests. And the very last section is the video not review section. I mentioned this earlier. The student can look at knots by grade here. There's no testing going on. So the way this is useful is he can look at number one combination knots or edge knots, depending which ones he selects. Uh, and all, all he'll see is number one knots. And you can see these are quite small. And he can look at, there's 70 examples here. And then he can close this, and he can actually go to number three knots, second. That's what we recommend he does. And see how much larger these knots are. Quite a bit of difference between a one and a three. And then at, after he's looked at several of these video clips with the larger knots, then he can go back to number two. And the student will have a fairly good idea of how big the knots can be in each grade without even knowing how to measure them. So this is a good review. Some of the mills use the knot section and the knot test and the knot review and the grading rules review as periodic reviews once a student has completed all the lesson content. So that gives you a quick overview of the course. Um, when the student completes the lesson content, he'll learn a certificate. When he completes each of the knot tests, he'll learn a certificate for those knots that he successfully completed. And the rules review also will give the student a certificate when that's completed. So that's the overview of the course.